nobody's coming back from the grave. Or let's just put it this way. Except in a supernatural way, nobody's coming back from the grave. Bringing them back? That's not going to happen. That's our subject, by the way, for the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics today, bringing them back. I'm your host. I'm Kurt. Uh, thank you for everybody who's joining me on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, or anywhere else. Today is Sunday, the 25th of April, 2021, and I'm glad to have you along today. And again, the subject of today's little video will be bringing them back. I'm going to do a little reading of my notes, like I often do. Uh, whether or not sentencing a person to hard time if a murder has occurred, the person killed is not coming back. They're not coming back. The basis for determination what punishment or other remediation is never, should never be on whether or, or not the person murdered can be brought back. That's, that's got nothing to do with that. With that in mind, whether or not a couple of teenagers were tried as adults should have nothing to do with whether or not their victim is coming back, because we know he's not. Their victim is not coming back. Nor should that ever be a consideration for what's done to perpetrators when they've murdered somebody. That's just not something that ought to happen. Of course, due process has to be followed. There must be due process. It's on the basis of that due process that determinations of guilt and actions ought to be taken. That ought to be taken should occur. That's, that's what should drive those, you know, what happens. The thing of it is this. If you say to me, well, he's not coming back and therefore charging them adults as adults really does, makes no difference. Yeah, it actually does make difference, a difference because, because those family members who will never see their dad, their husband, their, in this case their husband, in the other cases their wife, their aunt, their un uncles, aunts, uncles, their grandparents, whoever, will never see them again, okay? Now, is, should that be the basis for the determination how they are dealt with? No, no, it shouldn't. Again, due process should occur. What should happen is somebody should sit down and look at what their intent was, what they were trying to do, what they were about. Now, it seems to me like in this particular case, these kids, and they were kids, did something stupid that cost somebody their lives. And if you ask me, well, were they trying to kill them? The answer is obviously not. So murder, murder one or murder in the first degree or whatever you want to call it, is probably not called for. I'm not the, the one doing the sentencing or the um, charging, so I can't say for certain, but I certainly wouldn't say so. Uh, I kind of argue that manslaughter might be a reasonable thing. I do question whether or not they should be tried as adults because, frankly, they were acting as stupid kids. That's what happened. So probably they shouldn't be tried as adults. But the point is, at no point is the determination of whether or not they are tried as adults, tried as children, what charges are actually put forth, whether or not a grand jury is impaneled, uh, and various other things. At no point is that on the basis of, well, the victim is not coming back. That's not correct. You're not worrying, you're not even talking about the right thing if you say that. If I hear you say that in public, I will assume that you, if you are the prosecutor, are guilty of malfeasance. You're guilty of malfeasance because that is not what should be any sort of a determination, you know, matter for determination as to whether or not that person or those people who have committed crimes are, are sent, you know, sent, or not sent, but are tried as adults. Uh, are tried for certain crimes. What should happen is the same thing that it should have happened in the Derek Chauvin case, right? What should have happened is they should have looked at his intent, regardless his actions, they should have looked at his intent, and that should have been the basis. Did he intend to kill Mr. Chauvin? No. Or Mr. Uh, Floyd? No. Well, guess what? He's not, you know, there's no, there's no murder. Uh, well, I mean, you could argue there's a murder in the second or whatever, but I would say it's more likely that it should have been an aggravated manslaughter or similar. That all aside, they made their decisions. They supposedly did due process. I don't believe they did, but that's beside the point. That's that's my opinion and nothing more, and you should take it for what it's worth. Um, nonetheless, that's what they did. They went through the process, and that's exactly what should happen with the young ladies who ended up causing the death of the guy who was doing food delivery or whatever, who lost his life as a result of their actions. Their age does factor in. 
what they intended to do does factor in. How mature they are does factor in. And I think we've done a lot recently of charging children as adults when they really didn't know what it was that they were doing. And I think we need to watch that. But the most important thing here is due process. We need to have people who are looking at what happened. We need to have people who are charging accordingly, whether as adults or as children. We need to have a trial that proves innocence or guilt. And once the trial has proven innocence, we need to let folks go or guilt. We need to take the appropriate action. And again, if that person is charged as a child, well, the appropriate action is to sentence them as you would a child. Now, that may mean they'll do, quote, hard time, but typically what it means is they'll only be subject to that time until they're 18 or 21 or whatever it is, at which point they'll be released. And when they're, when they're released, their records will be expunged so that they're working from a totally different perspective at that point in time. Is that what will happen in this case? It sounds like it. But again, the thing that I want to make perfectly, perfectly plain is the victim coming back in a murder, you know, situation? No. Does it matter whether it's this or a, a wrongful death situation? Does it matter whether or not it's this particular case? No. That person's not coming back. The idea of you can't bring them back is beside the point. Duh. You can't bring back anybody who's been murdered. That's not possible. Or at least not with our technologies as they are today. I don't know what killed the guy? I don't know any of that, so I don't know if there was a possibility to res resuscitate him, and if he, if so, whether or not he would have lived on for, to have a long, healthy life. I can't answer that. I know that he wasn't brought back, and I know that the result is that that guy is gone. And I'm going to say this again. Any family member, any friends that he had, anybody who might have met him on the street will never see that man again on this planet. And I'm going to tell you something as a Christian. What bothers me even more is you've taken the right of that individual to salvation if they don't have it, right? I think the guy was a Muslim, and as far as I understand it, that's not saved. Sorry to tell you this. So you've taken the right of salvation. So the funny thing is, as a Muslim, I'm more bothered by the fact that he was killed rather than less. Yeah, it would bother me if a Christian was killed. It would. But it bothers me more than a Muslim is because he can never have that shot of redemption that he would have had if he could have lived on. So yeah, it actually bothers me more that the Muslim guy died. So if you're wondering if I, as a Christian, for example, am, am thinking otherwise, the answer is no, it actually bothers me more. But the important, important, important thing is you can never give a life back. When it's taken, it's gone one of the reasons I've never been a fan of capital punishment, right, is you can't give it back once it's gone. So when you find out you're wrong about what you thought was true for a given individual, guess what? You, you went ahead and you imposed the death penalty and you actually did it. You actually followed through. That person is gone. They're never coming back. So this, this question of bringing them back, we know that that's not a thing. We know that that's not a thing, and it's not anything that should ever be used as an attempt to, for on extenuating circumstances or whatever. No, it's actually worse. It's actually, you've actually said something that's worse. Well, we can't, sentencing them to this means we can't bring them back. No, but it does mean potentially that we can bring justice to the people uh, who are, who have lost their relative, their friend, whatever, right? It does mean that, potentially. Granted, it's, you, you, since you can't bring them back, you can only do so much, right? That's a given. That's, that's a true thing. But the point is, at least those people can feel like the system did not let them down. Now, again, we have to remember that due process has to play out. We have to remember that there are decisions to be made about whether these people were acting as children, as adults, or as, a, or as adults. We have to, uh, you know, decide whether or not the, per, the people are person or people in question are guilty. These are all important things. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up now. Uh, I, I Again, I, I can't say this enough. The idea of bringing them back is not a significant one when it comes to deciding how you need to act. 
Okay, this has been the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt. Today is Sunday, the 25th of April of 2021. That means tomorrow will be Monday, the 26th of April of 2021. Thank you if you've been here on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube. Thank you very much for coming here. Remember that you can like me, like the video on YouTube, and you can positive Rumble it on Rumble if you enjoyed what you've seen today or if you found that it useful or, you know, whatever. Uh, the subject of today's video has been bringing me back. Tomorrow's subject is going to be not the sword. I am not, and as far as I'm concerned, Christianity is not, quote, the sword. And that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. All right. Uh, thanks again for coming along. Again, today is Sunday. For us Christians, it's the beginning of the week. Tomorrow will be the beginning of the work week. Hopefully things are going well for you, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow on the Daily Summation. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Sunday, April 25th of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurtz Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional and maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurtz Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. Of a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurt's Religion and Politics as well. I have I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with a with an S dot kpshubert.com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert.com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the Daily Summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.